we start to explore this topic, it's, I think it's important to go back and think about, have girls changed? Have girls really changed um, over time? And as I think about that, I really, I don't think that girls have changed that much, but I think the tools and the messages for girls have changed. Um, when I think about when I was a middle school girl and the things that I was excited about or worried about or anxious about, it's very similar to the things that girls today are worried about, anxious about, excited about. The difference is the tools that are available to them, the technology, as well as the messages that have shifted over time. And so when I start this, th this journey of, of looking at how, how things have changed uh, for girls and women over the, the last few decades, I go back to thinking about relational aggression. Um, relational aggression is that manipulation that is intended to harm or control another individual's ability to build or maintain rapport with, peer, with peers. So it really is that, that intentional harming of relationships. And so I wanted to kind of explore if that had changed uh, with girls over time. And so I went back to the oldest book that I'm familiar with, which was the Bible. And I started to look in the Bible to see if there was any, if I could identify any relational aggression in the Bible. And sure enough, right there in Genesis, I could find a, an example of relational aggression with Adam and Eve. That was a relational manipulation. Uh, fast forward to Sarai and Hagar, again, more relational uh, aggression between women. And so I fast forwarded to, to the olden days, you know, the days on the prairie and Little House on the Prairie and looked at, was there relational aggression in Little House on the Prairie? Sure. And then fast forward to the 80s and the facts of life and was there relational aggression in the facts of life? The answer is yes. And then fast forward to the 90s and Hannah Montana. And was there relational aggression in Hannah Montana? And the answer again is yes. But see, when I ask those questions, when I'm doing this with large groups, everyone becomes confused when we get to Hannah Montana. Because as soon as I say, Little House on the Prairie, someone immediately says Nellie. And it goes across the room like wildfire. Nellie, 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 Nellie. And as soon as I say, Facts of Life, someone says, Blair. And again, wildfire, Blair, 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 Blair. But when I say Hannah Montana, it's quiet. And this is where we can start to pinpoint the message to girls changing. Because if you think about Little House on the Prairie, even though um, Nellie was portrayed as the prettiest, um, the most powerful, she had all the best fashion, she had all the best candy, but even with all of that, none of us wanted to be like Nellie. We knew that she was the antagonist. And the same thing with Blair. Again, portrayed as the prettiest, the wealthiest, the most powerful family, had all the best fashion, yet still, no one watching wanted to be anything like Blair. Because we knew Nellie and Blair were the antagonists. We wanted to be more like Mary or Tootie. But you fast forward to Hannah Montana, and Hannah Montana is the Nellie and Blair of the past. However, she is portrayed as the heroine. When she uses that relational aggression, when she uses her powers to manipulate those around her, that's when she gets ahead. When she uses that relational aggression or when she says something snarky or hurtful to those around her, it's when that canned laughter comes in. And so that relational aggression began to transform. The message around relational aggression began to transform. And I think this is important for us to understand as we, as we explore this topic of social media to understand why girls are using the technology in the way that they are. Because understanding that relational aggression is the natural normal response in difficult and challenging situations for girls. In the same way that physical aggression is the natural normal response in difficult and challenging situations for boys. Now with our boys at very young ages, we start to shape that natural normal response into something more pro-social. So for example, if you have two boys that are wrestling or fighting out at recess, whether you are a 14-year-old babysitter or a child psychologist from Harvard, you are going to break those boys up, you're going to check for blood breaks and bruises, and then you are probably going to have a conversation that sounds something like, 
Instead of using your fists, use your words. 